Hey everyone, in this unit we will be discussing one of the most exciting eras in US history, the Roaring Twenties. For this first video, we will analyze the impact of politics and the economy on the 1920s. So, let's get into it. That's the greatest country in the whole world! America! 1920s politics was dominated by three Republican presidents. Warren G. Harding, Calvin Coolidge, and Herbert Hoover. Warren Harding, elected president in 1920, was a former newspaper reporter who turned politician who served as a senator from Ohio. Harding gained the presidential nomination because Republicans felt they could control him in the White House. In terms of personality, Harding was known for enjoying golf, alcohol, and poker. Not necessarily in that order. Harding's campaign slogan for the presidency was, A Return to Normalcy which emphasizes his efforts to return Americans back to the way of life before World War I. Harding's presidency is complicated. On one hand, he witnessed the start of an age of great economic wealth. At the same time, his presidency was one of incompetence and scandal. As president, he brought in his friends from Ohio, known as the Ohio Gang, to serve in the U.S. government, leading to one of the most corrupt presidencies in our nation's history. Harding's critics depicted him as weak, lazy, and incompetent, and today he is considered among the worst presidents in U.S. history. Yet Harding never actually finished his first term. On August 2, 1923, he suffered a stroke and died in San Francisco, leaving the presidency to his vice president, Calvin Coolidge. Calvin Coolidge, whose nickname was Silent Cal due to his quiet demeanor, was another Republican and former governor of Massachusetts who helped Harding win the presidency in 1920. After finishing Harding's term, Coolidge won re-election in 1924 with one of the coolest campaign slogans in history, Keep Cool with Coolidge. Although not too flashy, he led a scandal-free administration. The most important thing to focus on regarding Harding and Coolidge is their similar attitudes about the economy. Going back the previous decade, under the progressive leadership of Roosevelt and Wilson, the federal government had passed laws to break up monopolies, protect workers, and restrict the absolute freedom of business leaders. By contrast, both Harding and Coolidge favored a return to more traditional laissez-faire approach. The term laissez-faire literally means let be, refers to an economic policy of letting the economy work without interference or regulation. The idea was, if businesses are left alone, they will prosper. Harding and Coolidge cut business regulations, cut taxes on businesses and the wealthy, and had a pro-business mindset. Their approach is best demonstrated by a statement Coolidge once made, the business of America is business. They had a very hands-off philosophy in an effort to allow businesses to flourish. And for the 1920s, their economic approach worked. The federal debt deficit shrank and the economy boomed. The economic success of Harding and Coolidge helped a new Republican, Herbert Hoover, win the White House in the 1928 election. Hoover grew up an orphan and in poverty, but became a self-made man. He graduated from Stanford and was a millionaire before the age of 40. Hoover was a well-known humanitarian and was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize five times. Hoover went on to serve as Secretary of Commerce in the administration of Warren G. Harding. His campaign in 1928 promised Americans a chicken in every pot and a car in every garage. While the rest of the world faced an economic crisis after the First World War, the presidential policies of the United States helped establish a booming economy. For instance, between the years 1920 and 1929, the United States accumulated 40% of the world's wealth. Additionally, the annual income of average Americans rose by nearly 30%. So why did this happen? Well, numerous components came together during the 1920s to fuel this economic boom. First, there was a flood of new technologies and consumer goods. Increased productivity meant more products for consumers. Lower taxes gave Americans money in their pockets. And lastly, easy credit allowed Americans to spend far beyond their means. Using credit, Americans could buy now and pay later. The biggest characteristic of the 1920s economy was an extreme growth in consumerism. 
Consumerism is when citizens purchase goods and services in ever-increasing amounts. During the 1920s, average Americans bought goods at rates never before seen as they were flush with cash and ready to spend their hard-earned money. Many of the goods purchased made lives easier as electricity first entered the homes of millions. For instance, Americans bought electric washing machines, vacuum cleaners, irons, refrigerator stoves, and radios. Helping to feed consumerism was targeted advertising. Using new scientific techniques and psychological research, advertisers sold more products to Americans than ever before. Advertisements focused on the desires and fears of Americans, more than on what people really needed. The 1920s is also known as the decade of the automobile. One of the biggest reasons the automobile became so big was because of Henry Ford, founder of Ford Motor Cars. During the 1920s, Henry Ford perfected the assembly line. Assembly lines involved workers completing one task at a rapid pace on the car as it moved along down the line. It is the same method that McDonald's uses to make food and Apple uses to make technology today. To understand the assembly line, consider these numbers. Before, a car took up to 12 hours to manufacture. Ford could make a car in 90 minutes. Four Ford manufacturing plants could produce up to 9,109 new cars a day. That is one car for every 10 seconds of the working day. This made vehicles more affordable. Early in the century, only wealthy city dwellers could buy cars. But in 1908, Henry Ford introduced the Model T, a reliable car the average American could afford. The first Model T sold for $850. By 1927, the price dropped to $290. By the end of the 1920s, 75% of American households owned a car. 20 million cars crowded into American cities. The impact of the car was drastic. Roads were paved, interstate highways, new towns, gas stations, and hotels were all created. Oil, rubber, steel, and manufacturing industries all flourished. Cities expanded and many families moved away from the city and into the suburbs. Accidents were actually extremely common during the 1920s, as pedestrians had to learn to watch out for cars and cars for pedestrians. There was no such thing as a driver's license either. Faced with this new threat, police created the first traffic light and stop signs as they spread throughout the country. Still, unfortunately, fatalities were common. In 1920, there were 12,000. By the end of the decade, there were over 30,000. With such an economic boom, the big question remains, was the economy stable? From the outside looking in, the Roaring Twenties appears to be, well, roaring. But in reality, the United States was experiencing a superficial prosperity, meaning that the nation was not as prosperous as it appeared. And there were numerous warning signs including massive consumerism on credit where most Americans spent beyond what they could really afford and they racked up massive debt. This was a major red flag as most Americans bought without consideration for how they would eventually pay off their debt. Another warning sign included economic inequality. As the rich got richer, the poor struggled as they saw their wages increase the least. So while the 1920s economy was certainly an era of great economic growth, prosperity, and decadence, there were many issues lying beneath the surface. Thanks for watching everyone, and be sure to tune in for the next video.